Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today we are looking at the Toshiba Satellite C50B 14D once again. Now if you remember last time with this machine I installed Windows 10 and showed just how slowly it runs. Well the owner has given me permission to install an SSD so that is what we will be doing today. I've gone for a Crucial BX500. This is the same model that I put in my Mac Mini. Very cheap drive and it gets the job done. It should perform better than the hard drive that's in this thing. Now of course this is only 240 gigabytes and the hard drive that's in here is 500 so less space but for the price this should definitely give the user a better experience. So let's just start to take this thing apart. I don't think it's too difficult. There's a lot of screws on the base, so I'm guessing they just need to be removed. But first, I will take out the battery as there might be some hidden screws under there. I'm not too sure. All right, so the battery is now out. I must say that is an incredibly small battery. I'm not sure what sort of battery life this thing's meant to get. But I don't think it will be too good with such a small battery. But taking the battery out shows that there doesn't look to be any more screws. So I'm guessing all I have to do is unscrew all the ones that I can see on the base. So I will speed that up. And there we go, I have now removed all the screws. It's worth mentioning that there wasn't one in this hole, so it looks like this might have been opened in the past, I'm not too sure. And something else I've noticed is there isn't a real optical drive. This is just a blanking plate, which is kind of strange. So it looks like this is a really low end on the low end of laptops, which is strange. I don't think I've seen a computer with a blanked off bit for an optical drive before. So I'm guessing now all I've got to do is pull up on the casing and it should just come apart. And um, there we go, that actually took more force than I really wanted to use, but it is now off. And the first thing I notice is that there is SATA connections for an optical drive, so this board clearly can support it, so it's strange to see that there isn't one in here. But here is the inside of the machine. Hard drive is up here. Here is our RAM. Now this is a four gigabyte stick, and I was thinking maybe of those two slots, I would install another stick to bring it up to eight, but it doesn't look like I'll be able to do that so far now. This will stay on 4 gigabytes, which will probably be fine for what this machine will be used for. So what we need to do is just focus on the drive. I don't actually know how to take this out. Okay, so here's a closer look at the drive. I need to pull up on these blue rubbery bits here and then the whole drive will just lift up. I'll have to be careful not to snap the SATA connectors. But there we go, it just slides right off. So I'm guessing I now need to take this casing off and we can put the SSD in here. Before we start taking bits off the old drive, let's take a look at the new one. I'm guessing it will just be the drive in here because I do already have one, so kind of know what it is. So let's just open this thing up. A little bit of a manual, we won't be needing that. And there we go. Here is the drive, very simple drive, but it will get the job done. Metal casing and it does look pretty nice. Shame that you won't be able to see it inside the computer, but this should give it a nice little performance boost. Okay, so here is the hard drive. I'm guessing I need to take the rubbery thing off it. So that should just slide off. There we go. And it looks like this will need to be unscrewed from the back. I'm not exactly sure what it's for, I think it's just covering up the PCB, but I might as well take it off. So two screws on the back, and I think a screw from the back casing goes through that little hole, so it will help keep the drive secure. So I probably do need to put this on the new drive. 
There we go, that should now be able to come off, but it looks like it is adhered down, so I'm going to have to pull on it, and it should just come away. That was very, very stuck to the PCB, but I think it is probably for the best if I stick it down on the new SSD, just so it can be secured through that hole. So I will line it up, there we go, and just stick that down. I doubt it will really help much, but I might as well just try and keep it as standard as possible. Now I did notice on the original drive, there's some foam stuck on the side, so I'm guessing I should probably transfer that over to it. might just help stop the drive rattling around or something like that. It looks like there's also plastic on it as well, so I will just transfer that over to. There we go, that foamy stuff is now stuck on there, and I should probably screw this metal thing back in too, so I will now do that. There we go, so that is everything off the old drive now on the SSD. There's some mucky stuff stuck to the adhesive bit, but that's not a problem, and I should now try and install this rubbery thing again. There we are, rubbery casing is back on. The plastic thing is kind of bulging a bit, so maybe this drive is a bit thinner than the old hard drive, but I'm guessing that will be fine. So I'll bring the laptop back over, then we should be able to connect this up. All right, I've now brought the computer back over and we should just be able to install the new drive. The SATA connectors for the drive are over here. So I'm guessing I should just be able to slide it along. It's now connected and slide the rubber bits back into where they were on the casing, just like that. Push them all down and the drive is now in. And where that screw hole is on the metal thing lines up with one of the screw holes for the casing. So that is now installed. So we can put the bottom panel back on next. There's lots of plastic clips holding it down. So you will have to use quite a bit of force to make sure that it is all connected. Okay, so the casing is now clipped into place. I can install the fake optical drive back in and let's put all the screws back in. They are all the same length so it doesn't really matter whereabouts they go so I will now speed up putting all the screws back in. And there we go, all the screws are now back installed, apart from that one which I didn't have originally. So now I can put the battery back in and then we can boot this thing up. Now, since the Windows 10 install, which I only just did, is on that hard drive, there is nothing installed on this SSD, meaning I will have to reinstall Windows 10. 10 I could transfer it over but honestly it's easier just to do a fresh install and since there's nothing on the install anyway I might as well just do that. So once this is screwed in we can boot this thing up hopefully it will remember to boot to my Windows 10 installer and then we can go from there. Okay so it's upset about the date and time which is fine it's because I removed the battery but it has put us into the BIOS. So let's go and change the boot order. I would like to boot from USB, please. So let's select USB, put that up to the top. OK, let's now exit and save our changes. So now it should be able to find the USB and boot to that. We've got a swirly thing, so it looks like it has found something to boot from, and it must be the USB because there's nothing else with an install on, and yep, this purpley blue means we are now in the installer. All that is fine, and quite simply, let's install. Now let's see if the SSD is formatted in the correct way that it can just install straight to it. I'm probably guessing it isn't, but 
Let's just wait and see. All right, so of course we've got to accept the license terms and let's just do a custom install and can we just do it straight onto this? It looks like we can. It's installing, so once this is installed, I guess I'll come back. All right, so the machine is now back on and we can do the setup. Unlike last time, I'm not going to connect to the internet. That will make it easier to make an offline account because I don't want to connect a Microsoft account to this, of course, because it's not my machine. I do not have internet. So we should now be able to make a local account. Continue with limited setup. Who's going to use this computer? User, just a generic account. Memorable password, one, two, three, four. Security questions, just like last time. All the answers are going to be horse, 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 horse. All right, so this is just going to be an account just to make sure everything's working so I can just agree to all of this. I really don't think it matters too much just for this little account. Going to do just a few more things, it looks like. And there we are a couple minutes later and it looks like it is now on the desktop. So just like last time, I'm going to go into update and do all the updates which are available. So the time and date are actually wrong, so I am going to have to change that. So let's just search for time and date, there it is. Let's just get it to set everything automatically if it can. It would actually help if I connected it to the internet, so I'll do that then synchronize it, do the updates, and I'll come back once everything is done. All right, so that's probably the longest updating session I've ever had to sit through. There was a lot of updates, but they are now done. And the computer is running quicker than I think it probably ever did with a hard drive. So much quicker than it was before. Let's just open up Edge. Look how quick that was compared to on the hard drive. I think the hard drive took 30 odd seconds. This is just so much quicker. It's never going to be perfectly quick because this is a old machine now, but it is running a lot better. Let's look at task manager. So right now we are using about 45% of the memory. Of course, this only has four gigabytes, so it will be used up quite a lot, but I'm guessing for basic tasks, it should be fine, but I could put an 8 gigabyte stick in this if it was needed. Now the CPU is actually running at a low percentage right now, but before it was pinned at 100 doing the updates, so not a particularly powerful CPU, but yet again, for what this thing is, it should just work just fine. So I think that that is it for this video. The SSD install is successful, the computer is running quicker, and hopefully the owner will be happy with this thing. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was interesting in some way and maybe helpful if you wanted to put an SSD in one of these yourself. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.